Welcome to Grace Worship Online. My name is Lori and I'm so excited to welcome you. And I wanna extend a special welcome. If you're joining with us for the very first time, we're so glad you're here. Thank you for taking the time to spend your time with us in worship. Well, can you believe it? This week is Christmas, and we are so excited about our Christmas Isn't Canceled Christmas Eve experience. If you've been with us the last few weeks, then you've heard a lot about Christmas Isn't Canceled, and we're here to declare that 2020 cannot cancel Christmas. So we hope that you will join us by heading over to christmasisn'tcanceled.org and ordering your Christmas Eve experience digital box, and then join us on Christmas Eve at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And while you're there, order a box for a family member or a friend simply by submitting their email address. Well, we're so happy and excited that you are joining with us as we get ready to worship.
We're so glad you're with us. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're honored to be connected with you in this way. So the past few weeks, we have been talking about some of the physical senses, some of the favorite smells uh, we began with, and then the favorite tastes, and after that, the favorite sights. And so today, we're just going to continue that theme and talk a little bit, a bit about, think a little bit about some of the favorite sounds that you love to hear. So feel free to go ahead and put your responses in the comments right now about some of your favorite sounds. Maybe um, a favorite sound for you is the sound of the waves crashing on the beach or the sound of uh, rain falling on the roof, especially if you have a tin roof or a metal roof. Uh, or maybe it's the sound of birds chirping in the early morning. Uh, perhaps for you, uh, among your favorite sounds of all time were the were the words, will you marry me at some point along the way? Or you flip that around and maybe for you, your favorite sound was the answer to that question if you're the one who asked it and the answer being yes. That's a pretty good so sound if you've asked that question. Or maybe for you, uh, a favorite sound is just the sound of I love you. Those three words spoken from the lips and from the heart of someone you love and who loves you in return. So some of the beautiful, wonderful, favorite sounds that we love to hear. And then narrow that down and put some comments as well along the lines of your favorite 
sounds of Christmas, beautiful, wonderful sounds of Christmas. And maybe for you, it's uh, just the sound of Christmas carols in general, Christmas music, uh, or perhaps it's one Christmas carol in particular that's your all-time favorite. Maybe for you, it's the sound of those words, welcome home, when you've gone home or you've come home for Christmas. It's nothing like hearing someone in your family say, welcome home. Or maybe it's the sound of just the oohs and the ahs and uh, the laughter, the love, the exuberance of all these excited little children on Christmas morning. It's nothing like that beautiful, wonderful sound. Uh, or maybe for you, it's uh, the sound of just the peaceful, calm, and quiet that you maybe are able to find if you steal away a little bit on Christmas Eve or you're able to steal away a little bit in the early, early morning hours of Christmas Day. That peaceful, calm, and quiet. The beautiful, wonderful sounds of Christmas. You know, it's likely a, a peaceful, calm, and quiet night that night when those shepherds were out in the fields watching their flocks um, by night. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, an angel shows up. And then a lot of angels come sharing, the, you know, what would be the, the best news that they and we and the world would ever hear. Some of the best news that the world and we would ever hear. We're going to read a story from the Bible about that news today. And we're reading today from uh, the New Testament book of Luke from chapter 2 and starting with verse 8, going on through verse 21. So let's listen for God's word. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord." And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and they found the baby lying in a manger and a feeding trough for animals. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus. He was called Jesus. The sound those shepherds heard that night is exactly the sound that you and I in the world need to hear all these years later. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that shall be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. The Lord. And you think about it, those three words. Those are three of the most exceptional words, three of the most exceptional names, three of the most exceptional titles that could have been spoken and that could have been heard. And they were all spoken of this baby, a Savior, Christ the Lord. So we're going to unpack those words just a little bit for a little bit, bit of background today. So first of all, Savior. That word savior in that day and time, most of the time would have been used to refer to the Roman emperor. And so Caesar Augustus was the emperor at that time. He would have been called the savior. He was the most powerful man on the planet. And his word was said to be the gospel. A lot of people believe that when he died, he would become a God, a man who became a God. And so with that as the backdrop, this angel is saying that the real Savior with the real gospel is not the Caesar, but this baby, Savior, who is Christ, who is Christ. That word Christ meant Messiah, the, the one who would be the, the true king of God's people, the one who had been promised, the one who had been hoped for for generations, Christ, the Lord. That's the name of God himself. The name of God himself given to this little baby, the one in whom God would enter mankind, the one in whom God would enter human history to confirm his lordship even more. A savior, Christ 
the Lord. These three exceptional names, three exceptional titles given to this baby. Now, if you, you would think this angel bringing this earth-shattering news that he'd bring it in some big, powerful, earth-shattering, grand and glorious way, right? But in the, in, in the face of a culture that called the Caesar the Savior, this angel saying, no, the, this baby's the Savior. This baby is the Christ. This baby is the Lord, God himself, and this living, breathing child was wrapped up in a swallowing cloth and lying in a feeding trough for animals, lying in a manger. And that's the real gospel. That's the real gospel, not the gospel of Caesar, but the gospel of God. That's the real good news that the shepherds heard all those years ago and that you and I in the world desperately need to hear all these years later. That's the sound that broke through the silence that night out there in the fields as those shepherds were watching their flocks. They heard the sound breaking through the silence that the, that the world would not be saved by a man who would become a God, by a man, Caesar, who would become a God. The world would be saved by God who became a man. That broke the silence. That good news broke the silence for those shepherds. And maybe, maybe you need some good news to break some silence in your own life lately. We talked about uh, silence in a good way earlier, that peaceful, calm, and quiet. That's a beautiful, wonderful sound sometimes at Christmas that, that we love to hear and that uh, we want more of. But there's the flip side to silence. There's other kinds of silence that's hard. There's other kinds of silence that's dark and, and painful and not good. And maybe you have experienced that before. Maybe you are experiencing that to a certain degree even now. And that silence maybe where there used to be a sound. The silence where there used to be the sound maybe of your husband. Where there used to be the sound of your, of your wife. The silence where there used to be the sound of your brother or your sister or your son or your daughter or your mother or your father. And you would give anything just to hear the sound of their voice one more time. You'd give anything just to hear the sound of their laughter one more time. You would give anything just to hear the sound of I love you spoken from their lips just one more time, especially here at Christmas. But, but the silence of their absence is deafening. And that's hard and that's painful. And then maybe there's other types of silence that you experience. It might be the silence reminding you that you're alone or that you're lonely even if you're not alone. Even if there's other people with you, you still feel lonely on the inside. There's silence within you and silence around you. And, and that silence maybe sometimes leads to sobbing and that's dark and that's hard and that's painful. Or maybe silence that you have experienced or that you're experiencing right now is this silence that you feel that is coming from God. You know, you, you call out, you cry out, you praise, you pray, you try everything, but you just feel like he's not hearing. You feel like he's not answering. Where are you, God? I'm, I'm looking, but I'm not seeing. I'm listening, but I'm not hearing. Silence. Maybe you're experiencing some of that kind of silence that's hard and that's dark and that's painful or some other sort of silence in that, same, in that same way. The good news of great joy breaks through silence, friends. The good news of great joy breaks through the shadows, breaks through the darkness, breaks through the pain. Savior, Christ the Lord, has come. Savior, the one who saves, the one who rescues, the one who helps, the one who heals has come. Christ, the, 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 the true king who leads in the will and the way of God has come the Lord, God himself, God himself in this infinite infant has come. The Savior Christ the Lord has come to be with us and to be for us, to be with you and to be for you. Now who could embody all that? Who in the world could embody all that glory? And, and, and what name even? could contain all that. What name could contain all that glory? Listen in here. Listen for different names, different titles, different descriptions. And, and the name that can contain all that, the name that is above every name. So listen and watch.
What name could contain such a glory? In the cool breezes of Eden, wrought from the infant earth, one arose, the voice of his creator speaking his identity to life. Adam, man. And as heaven waited short with bread, the creator spoke yet another, Eve, mother of all the living. So it was with Abraham, named in the promise as the father of nations, Peter, the rock upon which the church would stand. The name called to life the destiny within. The name set the stage for all that was to come. And unto us a child was born. And what name could contain his glory? For he was mighty God, as the universe gasped into being, flinging rays of light from his presence to pierce the void, to shatter the shadows to a tapestry of color. And he is mighty God, shattering our darkness, revealing our light, our truth in him. He was everlasting father when orphaned Israel needed a father's touch. When we, with grief-stricken cheeks, need the embrace of one who never leaves. When we have lost our way to dark horizons, it is our everlasting father who lights the way home. He is Prince of Peace. When, like Elijah, we need the still small voice in the turmoil's midst. When, like David, we need the melodies of his presence to soothe our troubled minds. He is sanctuary within our trials, shepherd guiding us to still waters. And yes, he is wonderful counselor. God who gives counsel in the chaos, crafting disorder in the calm and failure into beauty. He is a voice for the voiceless. He is dignity for the stateless soul. It is he who raised up a lowly shepherd to become a king. He who took the fishermen of Galilee and made them leaders of history. It is the counselor who redeems our lost years, breaking chains that have kept dreams imprisoned and joy confined. The name reaches across eternity, exclaimed by the splendors of galaxies, sung by the passions of angels, roared in heaven's fervor, exalted in creation's unfettered rejoicing. What name could contain him? What title? What soul renowned? For this is our wonderful counselor. This is our mighty God. This is our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. What name could contain Emmanuel, God with us, Yahweh, the Great I Am. What name could contain the Word of Life, the Light of the World, the King of Kings, the Lord of All. We bow to the name that holds every other in its matchless worth. What name could contain such a glory? What name but Jesus? We cry Jesus. We cry holy is the name. He was called Jesus. That's the last line that we read today from the Bible. He was called Jesus. That word, that name Jesus literally means Yahweh saves or God saves. And that right there, friends, that's the best, most beautiful, most wonderful sound of Christmas. Jesus, the most beautiful, wonderful sound. Never to be silenced, never to be canceled. Not then, not now, not ever. Those uh, shepherds out in the fields, they heard the sound of the good news breaking through the silence. And then they experienced the joy and the glory of Jesus. And after having experienced that joy and that glory, they carried with them that good news near and far, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard. By God's grace, they claimed the name of Jesus. 
And then they proclaimed the name of Jesus. And a long time after that, many years later, in the early years of America, there were some sounds and there were some songs that were born out of the very silent darkness, the painful, dark, day-to-day experience of an awful lot of people. An awful lot of those people heard the sound of the good news breaking through that silence, shattering that silence. And by the grace of God, many of those people claimed the name of Jesus. And then they began to proclaim the name of Jesus with all sorts of sounds and all sorts of songs and spirituals, like when the saints go marching in down by the riverside. He's got the whole world in his hands. Swing low, sweet chariot. And I could go on and on and on. Beautiful, wonderful spirituals, songs and sounds. And one of those spirituals, at least one of those spirituals was about Christmas. Maybe you know it. Maybe you've heard it. Maybe you've sung it. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. They claim the name of Jesus And then they proclaim the name of Jesus. And I hope you will too. And all the sounds of Christmas and the sounds of the season, the sounds of silence, the sounds of celebration and everything in between, listen closely for the sound of the good news breaking through. Listen for the good news breaking through. And then flip that around, friends, and and let the world hear. Let your friends hear. Let your family hear. Let your neighbors hear. Let the church hear. Let the community hear. Let the world hear the good news breaking through you. And we're going to sing this song in just a minute. And so I hope as you sing this song that you will pray and think about ways that God will lead you to live it out, to, to on the mountain to live it out. Now, look, if you're in Florida where we are, you know we don't have mountains, so don't take it literally. Maybe you're watching where there are mountains, so you can tell it on the mountain. And over the hills, we don't even really have hills. So over the bridges, maybe. Over the bridges and everywhere. We do have everywhere. And everywhere would be home and work and school and neighborhood and social media, anywhere and everywhere, live it and tell it, Jesus Christ is born. Christ isn't canceled because, excuse me, Christmas isn't canceled because Christ isn't canceled. And because Christ isn't canceled, you know what else isn't canceled? Life isn't canceled. And that's good news of great joy too. Life isn't canceled. We're gonna be talking about that the next several weeks talking about just the joys and and the struggles of life in the day-to-day and how God speaks hope and how God speaks help into those joys and into those struggles in very real and tangible ways. And so I hope you'll be and stay connected with us in the next few weeks as we talk about life isn't canceled. But we're celebrating today that Christmas isn't canceled because Christ isn't canceled. The most beautiful, wonderful sound of Christmas, Jesus. Jesus contains all the glory Jesus contains all the grace poured out for you. The most beautiful, wonderful sound of Christmas. Jesus. Amen. Let's continue in worship, friends. Let's celebrate the birth of our Lord together.
Amen. And thank you so much, worship team. Thank you, friends, for worshiping with us, for singing that beautiful spiritual. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. That's the good news. We celebrate Christmas isn't canceled because Christ isn't canceled. He's born. We celebrate that. That's what we're preparing to celebrate uh, in the in the coming days on Christmas Eve. We hope that you'll join with us in that online Christmas Eve experience and celebration. Uh, and that's going to be at 5 o'clock. So be looking for more information coming your way on uh, our social media pages, on our website, on the Christmas Isn't Canceled org website. Uh, we would love for you to join in and also to invite plenty of other friends, neighbors, and uh, loved ones to join us. If they don't have other plans on Christmas Eve, to be here with us uh, online, five o'clock Christmas Eve. Christmas isn't canceled. And then, like I said in the message, uh, following up on that, we're going to be going into Life Isn't Canceled. And so there'll be a website with that with lots of content about just uh, typical struggles and joys of life and how God and the good news speak into that and provide provide resources for day-to-day help. So we'd love for you to stay connected with us at Grace, but we're honored to be with you today as we worship and uh, look forward to celebrating Christmas with you and with the world, the good news that God has brought our way in Jesus. Thank you, friends. Have a great day. Look forward to seeing you next time.